when we look at the programs, we do see different areas of concentration, some similarities, some different, one of them being mathematics. Another one, for example, in business information systems, uh, they take a sequence of courses in accounting. In software engineering technology, your students take two courses in physics. What's right. that for? What happens again is, as I mentioned, our students are writing software that interfaces a process or something like a conveyor, an assembly line, that has a mechanical system that you're controlling. In order for a student to be able to write software to control this process or to control a motor or something like that, they have to understand the physics behind how that process works, the mechanism, how mechanisms work. And it's very important for our students to take that physics sequence so that they understand the properties behind th this process. And again, it also helps them in, if they do decide to move on to a bachelor's degree level, that physics is usually a requirement there also. You mentioned earlier that your students take an electronics course. I noticed that in the curriculum. Right. And that's for similar reasons? I similar, guess. very similar, because most of the time when we are controlling a process or for writing software to control that process, there's something electronics in nature. We're going to be outputting data to a process to, to control it. We're going to be inputting data, analyzing that data, and, and deciding what we're going to do with the process. This is all electronics in nature. There, there are transducers. There are control systems that the student must understand. In this case, our students take basic electronics classes. They, they have a good knowledge of electronics, obviously not to the level of the electronics student, but they certainly can communicate on a professional level with engineers and technicians, and they are able to then write software to control these processes, and they, they understand how to deal with electrical signals and electronics controls. All three programs at the very end of the curriculum have something called a project class. And I, I think uh, they vary from one to as many as three in one of the majors. Right. What's a project class? The, pro the project course is a course that, as, as you said, every one of our majors requires to some level. And it's a course that pulls all of the information that the student has learned in their career here at Cincinnati State together to work on a true real, real world project that they may see uh, on, a, on a normal job. And what we do is, is we produce a project that the students will then work on together in, in a setting similar to they that they would have out in industry and, and produce a final project. And, and hopefully it used most or if not all of the information they learned in their two year career here at Cincinnati State. One more change of pace. Uh, all of these programs, software engineering technology, your program, uh, computer programming and database management that we did in the earlier video, and business information systems, yet to come, uh, all have a common first term. Uh, what is the common first term? Why was it created? Why do you have it in the, your programs? The, the common first term is a course of study that all of the students take regardless of which of the programming majors that, that they are enrolled in. And uh, for several reasons we, we created a common first term. As we had, had mentioned, it, when we developed this actual program department, we, we met with a lot of people. We, we met with program chairs and faculty as well as employers and advisors. And, and we realize that there's a core of courses that regardless of what type of programmer you are, you really need to know. And in order to be a programmer, we felt like everyone should take this particular core of courses. That's what's in that first term core, some, some basic courses that everyone should take. Also, we recognize that students entering this, uh, this area may not be exactly sure what they want to do they might think they want one of the programs, but once they get into it, they start studying or even go into a co-op job, they might find an area that they're much more interested in. With this common first term, we really found that it enables the students to investigate all of the programs, similar to what's happening in this course, and also then, if they do decide to make a change, they haven't wasted their time. 
So besides being important that everybody knows this core, it, pr it actually gives the student an extra term or so to make an informed decision on and to make sure their career path is really what they want. Well, in the uh, earlier interview, we talked about some elements of that first term. Uh, in our previous video, we talked to Don Young, Peter Program Chair of Computer Programming and Database Management, and he told us a little bit about the introductory course for Internet Programming, HTML, the introductory course for database uh, management and design using Access as, as the first software program. In our next interview, we're going to talk to Bob Neal's Program Chair of Business Information Systems. He's going to tell us a little bit about his program, but he's also going to talk about the sequence of high-level language courses, the introductory course in the common first term that Steve was just talking about being Visual Basic 1. So we'll move on to Bob's interview next.